So in this video, I'm going to be going over a technique that is most commonly used in screen printing, and that's called overprinting. And essentially, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's printing colors over other colors in order to make some really cool color interactions. So I have two examples right here, both showing overprinting in action, and both of these are screen printed posters. So on this example right here, you have a really complex example where the overprint is happening with this magenta type. And as it overlaps these different colors, it interacts with the different colors in different ways to give this poster a lot more depth than it would have had if this was just a flat magenta. And this example is really cool because it's just a two color print, but because they use some overprinting techniques, it makes it look like it's actually a three color print. And the reason people do this in screen printing is because in screen printing, each color requires its own separate screen. So the more screens you have, the more complex the print is. The more expensive it is to print, the longer it takes to print. There's a lot of reasons why in screen printing you don't want to use a lot of different screens. When you're dealing with something digital like Adobe Illustrator, it doesn't really matter how many colors you end up using, but it's still a really cool effect that people still use today to kind of emulate that style because ultimately it's a style that has a lot of visual interest and is kind of exciting to work with. So let's go ahead and just recreate this example that I had made up here. I guess these are both the same for the thumbnail of this video. So there's a few different things that you're gonna to wanna to have open. One is the appearance window, which is gonna be super helpful for actually creating the overprint effect. To get the appearance window open on your computer, just go to window in the options menu up the top here. And from window, you want to go to appearance. It's near the top and all these should be in alphabetical order. So just make sure that appearance, the window for appearance is opened up on your screen. I'm also gonna drag my swatches window right here onto my screen because you're gonna need the swatches window as well. Well, you don't actually need it, it's just very helpful. So to get the swatches window open, much like appearance, you just go to the window option at the top here. Go ahead and click that. And from the window option at the top, you go down to swatches, which is sort of near the bottom. And the reason why I say swatches is rather helpful is colors that work really well for overprinting are the basic CMYK colors. So I have them all drawn up right here on my screen kind of in pre-made little boxes. But in the swatches menu, when you hover over colors, it'll say things like CMYK red, CMYK yellow, then green, cyan, blue, magenta. And they should be the default top swatches when you open up your swatches window. So hopefully they should be there and really easy for you to find if you wanted to supply colors by clicking on these swatches. So for example, this example I have right here is CMYK cyan and CMYK magenta. Those two colors happen to work super well together for this, which is why I use them. But I did some really quick examples right here showing some different color interactions. So yellow and cyan creates a green color. This is basic color theory stuff, although using this blending mode, sometimes it doesn't behave like two paints would, for example, but you still get some really cool color interactions. And even in examples like this, where this is a cyan and a cyan overlapping to create a darker blue, that is something you can also do. So in at least some cases, you can use the same color overlapped on top of each other twice to create a secondary color where that overlap takes place. But let's just jump right into this one. And for this example, I use two different fonts, both in the same family. This one is called Passion One Black, and the one that says Print is called Passion One Bold. So I'll link both of those in the description. If for some reason I didn't do that, feel free to yell at me in the comments, and I'll be sure to add those in. But once again, this one that says Over is Passion One Black, and the one that says Print is Passion One Bold. And like I said before, the coloration for these, this is CMYK Magenta, which is right here in my swatches window. When you hover over the swatch, it should say the color name. And the one that says over is CMYK Cyan. So that is right here on my swatches window. And you can feel free to use your own colors and test them as you're doing this and play around like that. I highly recommend doing so actually. But just for reference, that's what I used in this particular example. So this one right here, I went ahead and turned off the effect so you can go ahead and see how to do this using the appearance window. I'm just gonna move my swatches off the screen now so it's not taking up space. Move that. So the appearance window is where you're gonna to wanna to be doing these changes once you have your design made. Once again, window and then appearance near the top to get that open. So what you wanna do is have your objects arranged so that they're arranged in the way that the order the visual order like top to bottom makes sense to do that if you want to do that you can click on the thing and then right click and then go to arrange from that menu and bring to front will bring that object to the front and send to back will send it to back so if i send over to back it'll be behind this thing that says print and if i reselect over and then right click it and go to arrange bring to front 
it then pushes that in front of print. So you can decide the visual order that you want your things to be in as you're doing this. And once you have that done, you can go ahead and click on that item. And from your appearance window, which is right here on my screen, there'll be a little option that says opacity. You want to click on that. And from the opacity window, there'll be a drop down menu that says normal. And as you hover over it, it'll also say blending mode. This operates much like the blending modes in Photoshop operates. So you can go ahead and click that to bring this menu up. And from the menu, the one that I've found works the best is multiply. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that while the object that I want to overprint essentially is selected. So I'll go ahead and click that. So as you can see, when I clicked multiply, this over word became an overprint and you can tell it's creating some new color interactions where it overlaps on the word print, as well as these magenta squiggles that I had made. So with that one simple change, all of a sudden this changed visually quite a bit. If I click on over once again, click on opacity, bring that back up to normal here, you can see how it looked before. And then if I click it, go back to opacity, click on multiply once again, that is the end result of making that one small change in the appearance window. So as you can tell, it's really easy to do this stuff and it adds quite a bit of visual distinction from just a normal print. The same thing applies to these little squiggly marks that I made on the word print. So if I click on all these, I'm just going to hold shift. So I click them all at the same time. So they're all selected. If I go to stroke, since this is a stroked item and not a filled item, I want to click on the opacity by just clicking on this arrow next to stroke to open up the little menu. So if you don't see the opacity thing next to stroke on a stroked item, just click on the little arrow to open this up and then click opacity. And from that, once again, you want to use the drop down menu that says normal by default, click on that, go to multiply. And once I click multiply, you can now see the color interaction where it overlaps on the T really fast and easy to do that. And just really quickly, if you're wondering how to make squiggles really easily, I'm just going to go to the line tool over here in the toolbar. The default shortcut is backslash, and I'm just going to draw a line really quick and then zoom in a little bit on the line. So with this line selected, if you want to make some squiggles, you can go to effect and then from effect, you go to distort and transform and then zigzag. And from zigzag, here's a zigzag option menu. Click on preview so you can see what's happening. You want to change points from corner to smooth, and then you can adjust the size of this wavy shape and then adjust the amount of ridges per segment to make it look the way that you think it should look. That's just a really quick and easy way to make squiggly lines in case you're wondering how I made those. But that's really it for this tutorial. This is a lot of fun to do. I think it's kind of cool to see how you can arrange things in a way that really makes a strong use of the overlapping colors. My example is pretty simple, but once again, the examples I had shown previously are for different reasons, both really smart uses of overprinting. This one on the left being a very complex use of overprinting to create a lot of really interesting visual interactions. And this one on the right here is interesting because it really uses just two colors and the overprinting makes it feel like a much more complex print than it actually is. But that is it for this tutorial. I do hope you found it helpful. And if you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. And of course, if you have any questions or comments or ideas for future videos, you can feel free to leave them in the comments section. And if you did like this video and you want to see more stuff like this, feel free to subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new content just like this for designers. Thank you so much for watching.